Are you guys ready to see how we build an epic wetland filter inside of an above ground swimming pool? We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Well, it was great to get away, and Puerto Rico is such an awesome, beautiful place, but I'll have to say, there's nothing like home. And now that I'm back, we're back here at Aqualand. The swimming pool is up, and yes, it's an above-ground swimming pool. I literally went on Amazon, looked at swimming pools, and not just one, but two swimming pools would fit in this unique space, and we set the thing up. And the thing I was terrified about, like literally terrified, was there any possibilities for leaks? So we filled the whole thing all the way up to the very top. I don't know why I don't trust the swimming pool manufacturer, but I think it's more that I don't trust myself. I wanted to make sure that this thing 100% held water, fit in the area just right, and could accept everything we're going to do to it. Once that was done, we went to business, and it was just like building a pond outside. So imagine this area right here being your excavated hole and your rubber liner going down in your excavated hole. But because I couldn't excavate here, we had to build the thing up. We treated it no different than we would any wetland filter we were doing outside. I padded it with our double wall fabric. So this again is your liner. I put in my fabric over the top of the fabric. Let me show you. But before we jump in, there's something I promised to show you guys. Now is the time you've all been waiting for. Thank you so much for being patient. But let's open up that koi window. I think the best way to do it is really cut the top of this. I'll come right down the side here. Hey Jack, do me a favor. I want you to hold this. You ready to show them? I'm ready if you're ready. One, four, <laughs> one, two, three. Wah, wah, wah. No, but really, this is why I didn't want to show you last week. Look at how cloudy that is. The whole point of this video is to show you how that wetland filter is going to take this water and turn it into crystal, crystal clear water. So come on, let's go look at that wetland filter and see how we're going to take this, filter it through that, send it back over here, and turn it into something that you might even want to drink out of. Jack, maybe you. Maybe? <laughs> Who else? So we're down in here in the bottom of our raised wetland, <laughs> if that makes sense. But like I was saying, it's just like building a wetland outside. The only difference is, is I couldn't dig down for the centipede. We always dug a trough down the center for our centipede to sit in here. Here I couldn't do that, so we set this basically right on the ground. Then you can see what we used to build it up with. Sandbags and aqua blocks to kind of fill that void. So we could get these aqua blocks to sit right over the top of it. Water's gonna come in through this pipe. Water gets pumped in through our centipede. Solids settle out in the centipede. If any solids don't settle out in the centipede, we give it one more opportunity to settle out in this first row of aqua blocks. As the water comes up through here, it should disperse out evenly throughout all of the aqua blocks before it comes up through what is really a test. Now this is why we have aquascape construction. It's way more for R&D. So one of the things I really wanted to test was our bio ball. So if you look inside of these aqua blocks, inside of every single one, we have about 1,200 bio balls. So we've got over 50,000 bio balls set it inside of this wetland filter here. So water's gonna come up then through all of these bio balls. The water pumped in through this, it fills back up, teeming with life, before it goes back out through these two holes and into the pond. So another really important thing we're doing here is we're putting this insulation board on there. Well, there's two main reasons. One, just another layer of protection to make sure that my pool liner doesn't get any sharp points at it. The second, come over here, guys. So we have our aqua blocks, our fabric, then our pool liner, thick fabric insulation board. There's this little space in between that I gotta fill with something. And the main reason I gotta fill it with something is because I don't want water that comes into the bottom of this taking the path of least resistance, which would be this big void. Fill this whole thing with gravel, which then forces all the water to come up 
yourself through these aqua blocks. It's too hard to come through this fabric membrane and all that gravel. Way easier to come up through these aqua blocks. I put the insulation board so that the weight of that gravel is displaced across the entire width of that pool liner wall instead of a piece of gravel pushing like that right in there, which could be really bad. So you guys, all of this is an experiment and I don't know what's gonna happen. So stay with us, enjoy the journey because I think it'll pay off in the end. It is a great morning and I'm super excited because we're doing one of many, many meetings. Yes, and I know meetings, a lot of you guys sounds like nails on a chalkboard, but it's a super important meeting. The meeting is with our entire local market team, kind of going over last year's wins, last year's obstacles, really going over our goals for this year, numbers, mental goals, physical goals, and all of that kind of stuff. And then talking about our maintenance season, where we want maintenance to be at. We want to go over all of our vacation time. I want as much vacation time put in now before the season starts so we can plan our year. Some other things we're doing with like some mandatory Fridays off just to give guys breathers and big rests, bonus structures, things that we're working on, keep guys incentivized throughout the rest of the season, different events that we have, travel dates that I have, all that kind of stuff so we can be as transparent with the entire team as possible so everybody's on the same page. Just helps people plan, helps people mentally, helps people physically, it's gonna be fun. So we've got a good five hours stuck in this boardroom over here. Let's see how it goes. It's all about the attitude. Here we go. Actually hoping Ed's in his office. Twenty percent chance that the guy is in his office. He's not in his office. He's here with Lisa. Lisa, we need this guy. <laughs> hang it up. Hang it up. Come with me. Bye. <laughs> Where's your office? Right over here. Yeah. Come sit down. Ed. Yes. It's in my mind. Uh oh. I just don't know how to <clears throat> verbalize it. A quick keywords. Quick overview of the wetland filter. Why is the wetland filter going to be so beneficial for the koi tank back there? Oh my gosh. Quick. So a couple different things. Number one, it's going to slow down the flow rate. So we have. We have all this waste in the water. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have the jets and everything pushing all the sediments up. Now we have to get rid of them. So the nitrification cycle requires nitrifying bacteria. They don't like sediment. So we're gonna send the water into the first layer of aqua blocks in the centipede. Check, we we've got those. It's gonna allow the sediments to build up. Then the water's gonna flow up through the media. Now you're talking about changing out the uh, media. He's heard. I've heard. <laughs> yeah, it's a surface area. It's a very consistent surface area. I think rock and gravel, they're two different things. Bioballs has a higher surface area, but it's Okay. This is a question I have for you. There's 19 square inches of surface area on an inch and a half bio ball. Okay. The same size piece of gravel. Yes. I don't know how to figure that out. I have that number. Ooh! <laughs> you guys came to the right place. What is it? 23. I, you know what? Actually, I, I would have to look it up. I have it. I just got to find it. Inch and a half. Inch and a half. Inch and a half gravel. I don't have actually inch and a half, but I can calculate it. I have two inch, I have three inch, and I have three quarter inch. Let's take the three quarter inch and double it. Yeah, one more. Mm. <laughs> Not the way it works. This is why there's the professor and the perpetual student. <laughs> we can come up with that number. All right. Hold, please. Come on. Let's give Ed some time to do his calculations. In the meantime, I want to show you guys a consultation I went on earlier this week. All right. Just about to pull up to my consultation today. This is going to be a fun one. It's a rehab project. They said we built it years and years and years ago, but so many years ago that I don't really remember it. Like hard for me to do that, but I have built thousands of these things. So they've got a decent budget, 15 grand is what was discussed over the phone. They know it could go more if they go with more. Really, they're just looking for a facelift and that could mean redoing the waterfall. That could be just adding some more boulders here and there. It might even mean redoing the whole darn thing and that's what would definitely take it past the 15 budget, especially because the price of everything has gone up, especially with years and years and years and years. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, I get a chance to take you in the backyard and show you a little bit about what I see and what's in my mind and share it with you guys and put it in your mind and more importantly, the customer's mind. Wish me luck. Here we go. Well, that was a long one. <laughs> We're still talking. They're still thinking some things over. I just left them with a $75,000 price. And so, of course, they need some time. Think about it. That's not stretching the budget. That's like a different planet type budget. So <laughs> let me show you kind of what we're thinking about doing. Show you the fifteen dollars to $20,000 budget, and then I'll show you the seventy-five. dollars So they've got this waterfall. And we actually originally did this pond. The reason I didn't recognize it is because that's not my style waterfall. All those small 
little rocks in there. They want to simplify this. You see, it's nothing wrong with this waterfall. It's actually probably really gorgeous when it's running, but our style is just like, instead of a bunch of stacked rock, two or three rocks in there. The other thing that's happening over on this waterfall, somebody came in and split it and brought another waterfall in from this side and it just looked better. Let me see if I can get a better angle. So the idea would be simplify that waterfall, backfill soil back up into here, take the red bar down, which I don't really want to do, but we take the red bar down and I can put another biofalls over here and get another waterfall that comes in from this side. Right now, this waterfall is completely blocked by the corner of the house, no matter where you sit inside. So if I can shift the waterfall to be closer to this lantern and then bring it in that way, it'll work a whole lot better. That's going to be fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to redo that section. My plan, they have this whole pond and they can't see any of it from inside the house. They said they've never walked along this pathway and go down and sit there. And so I was talking a little bit about how we could take this whole thing overflow through a four foot high waterfall, cool stone step pathway with a bridge that leads to a destination area over there. This whole pond overflows and goes into a 3000 gallon rainwater harvesting system down in here that not only keeps this pond self-sustaining, but actually helps filter this pond a lot more. Harvest system would be a huge pre-filter for the pumps and everything else before water is sent up here to the biofalls and the wetland. Keeping this waterfall because it's still visible from inside and maybe adding another one over here. So I'm going to go back inside and see what they have to say. If they have any more questions, I can only guess that's a big decision and they might need to sleep on it a second. So they said they're doing something <laughs> and I'm leaning towards the bigger project. I am genuinely excited to do that project. Waterfall would be fun. I know they'll love it, but I think what got them the bigger project is how much it's going to reduce their maintenance. And as they're getting older, that made a lot more sense for them. The reason I think they're going to do that is because they had me share the vision a couple more times with them and talk about the maintenance again. How often will they have to clean their pond? And those are all signs that they're kind of leaning into that direction. And they said, you know what, if we're going to do this, how much more would it be to redo this waterfall as well? And usually you don't ask to add things on if you're already shocked by the price. That makes sense. But I'll let you know, find out what they say. Just want to make sure that this gravel gets up at least to the top of this if the gravel stops here because this is lower we're gonna see a lot of that water just channel up through this area and we want it to go up through the aqua blocks okay so here because we have these bulkhead fittings like this i think i would actually put like level this out a little bit take a piece of liner and do like a bib liner over that area so nothing comes up through this area bring that liner up into here forcing everything to come up through those aqua blocks and then over this and through these holes okay so do a bib liner if you have to put some bricks or stone or something to funnel everything into that yeah. and then right. so be it okay all right thank you looking good oh the man with the <laughs> that's seven thousand <000? laughs> oh, no way close oh seven point seven point zero seven six point. five square inches so a piece of gravel yes roughly has seven square inches of surface here a third over of that a third of this approximately so what we're trying to tell the people <laughs> is this could be three times better could be could be could be correct so the big reason we've been doing this for so many years and like we were telling everybody else really r d yeah so we're constantly field testing Always. stuff like this and so what a better place to field test literally thirteen thousand dollars in bio balls <laughs> than Does greg on know a, this? Shh, okay shh, shh. Right. the president doesn't know greg doesn't know no I'm, one will know obviously i'm hoping to get my <laughs> face on every box of bio balls pretty soon right <laughs> So what a better place than to test it at our own facility over here. We've got this huge koi pond. Here's what I know, no matter what. This filter is substantially larger than oh. what we had before. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, not even close. The old filter, the space, the real estate it yeah. took up was about the third the size right. of what this thing is. Right. Now right. we've got the half aqua blocks, three times the size, maybe even yep. four times the size, plus thirteen thousand dollars worth of bio balls <laughs> in it. I'm guessing it'll be cleaner. Better be cleaner. Right? I uh, better definitely. The thing I'm really excited about though, like looking at the long term maintenance of it and everything right. else. Sometimes cleaning out a wetland filter with the different aggregate levels yeah. can get challenging as you're hosing all that sure. stuff off. This will be easier to clean. That's just more money. So <laughs> before you go out and buy all of my bio balls, we'll let you know how it's working maybe in a year or so. It'll definitely be better. <laughs> okay. Without a doubt. Well, thanks. No problem. Seven square inches. I'll put, that, point zero six five. I'll put that in my back pocket.
All right, guys, it is the time. The time that you've all been waiting for. The time that I've been waiting for. I can't wait to see how this thing works. We've been working on that wetland filter back there for what seems like weeks. Or not just the wetland filter, but this whole project. And we don't know if it's gonna work, right? Like the whole bio ball thing, the whole idea of being the first above ground swimming pool turned into a wetland filter has gotta be exciting for you, right? The other thing I'm gonna show you guys is look at this. That doesn't look very clear. I'm hoping that within 24 hours, we get to see this thing spotless. We're gonna see just how clear we can get this thing within 24 hours. But I think if we can get it crystal, crystal clear in that amount of time, we've had success. So we're ready to do my favorite thing, plug in the pump, see how all this works, make sure it holds water. Because again, you're on this journey with me and we've never, ever, ever built a wetland filter with an above ground swimming pool. So let's come over here. I've got some extension cords that'll work for now. Fire this baby up. <laughs> there it goes. Well, that's a good sign. We don't see any leaking. Oh, water's aggressively coming out of that already. Come on, let's go see if the water's coming. Jack, how are we doing, bud? Doing good. It's filling up. So look at this, we're over the top of the aqua blocks here. We had to put all of this brick on top of the aqua blocks for a couple reasons. Those bio balls float, and underneath all of the aqua blocks, underneath the centipede, underneath the snorkel, we used that pink insulation board to pad everything. Well, I guess we used a little too much, and it caused everything to float, so we had to put this on. In real life application, we would have gravel over the top of all of this and make it look pretty like all of our other wetlands that you've seen. Let's go to the other side where you can see how this water flowing through the pipes. So you can see the water is filled up in this thing. Oh my God, look at this. I think we nailed it. If that comes up another inch, we've got a challenge. <laughs> that is right there. But everything's going through these bulkhead fittings. You guys want to see where the water discharges? Because I do. <laughs> so again, we're pulling from one side of the pond oh, and pushing from the other. It's perfect. It's exactly the way I pictured it. Water coming out of these pipes. You can see we built a planting trough along that whole backside. So next time you guys see this, I'm hoping what you see is a crystal clear pond and this thing loaded with our fish. You know, all the colored lights that we've got in here. You guys, I'm so happy at where we're at with this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for going on this journey with us. Can't wait to show you everything finished. Make sure you keep tuning in. Well, we're so happy at the way this thing is working right now. Everything is operating just the way we want. We tested it. It's holding water. It's not leaking anywhere. I would say it's getting a little clearer. I mean, it's only been working for like 20 minutes. But instead of waiting days and days and days to see how bad it can be, we're just going to go ahead and start building the other one. Boom! Filter number two. Remember now, this filter is going to be built exactly the same way as the other one. All right, man. So what do you think? By the end of the day tomorrow, this one's done? Yeah, I'd say so. Because now it's easy. After we got the kinks yeah. out of that one, I was like, oh, we're professionals at this. Above ground swimming pool filters for everybody. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. Stay with us on the journey. Can't wait to show you the clarity of all these things. Remember that one that Jack's working on now. It's the same size filter, and all that it's doing is going to be filtering these four areas here. So water is going to be discharged right there. Come down through here. Move through chamber to chamber to chamber to intake bay over here. Pump sit over here, push the water from here underneath everything over to that filter and then it just recirculates over and over and over again. The idea of having such a giant filter, a smaller amount of body, the reason we're doing that is because I want to load this thing up with fish. We're retailing fish over here, over there we're showing really high end fish. Hang on tight, we're almost done. That was fun. But I thought to myself, like, what an awesome way to end this video and show you what Chris has been working on over in our sandbox. Every single person I know is going to want one of these. It's... But speaking of Chris, I just saw that man shoot past over here. Let's go see what that guy's up to really quick because he should really be the one showing you. Chris! Hands up! <laughs> what are you doing? I'm on like take four. Well, that makes about the most sense possible. Yes. Yeah. You need to be like a one cut guy like me. I Well, I would have been. What are you doing? <laughs> this is like cut one, cut one, cut one. You know? <laughs> what are you doing? Tony and I are back here filming for the Aquascape University. So kind of going through our entire fleet, talking about the, the what, the how, the why, and then how to maintain them. Woo! Mm-hmm. So a big part of what Chris is doing this winter and throughout all of next season is kind of educating everybody from the maintenance stuff to fleet stuff to how we get organized. So right now, this is just getting everything ready for the season because if we get caught and we're not ready to get construction going, we're in trouble. Right. 
don't want to spend the entire part of spring doing this. We just take our off season to get this stuff ready. Yeah. That's awesome. You guys want to see more information on that, check out the university or you can really, really get a deep dive into that stuff. But for now, I wanted to show them what you did in the, the sandbox. The fire water Is that cool? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Chris took off in front of me, but I think he's just that proud of it. He wants to do this like big unveiling, which is exactly what you guys should see. Move that, Chris. <laughs> oh. So you guys know that fountain feature, but across the counter from the retail store, because of this, we're gonna be showing you guys next week, and not just how we did the fire bowl, but how I almost single-handedly burned down all of Aqualand. Till then, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, tell all your friends, and Chris will keep doing this over and over and over again.